No deal. Welcome to a new series about something you hardly see on television these days. Nuka. Oh. You often see the professionals knocking balls in from all angles and all the competitions, but what you don't see is them telling us how the game is played, learning the nuances, the skills, learning how to become a skillful snooker player. It's called the series Snooker Tailor Made because to teach us how to do it, we have as our host possibly. Yes, I think so. The most popular professionals on the circuit today. Dennis Taylor! The tip that I use is slightly domed. Uh -huh. Now, the normal cue, when you, when you buy a cue in the shop bar from, uh, you know, from the factory, wherever, it's got a flat tip on it. Now, that's going to cause a few problems. But in the billiard halls I've played in, oh, we've got flat tips. I've never seen any of it. Anyway. Well, they're so busy, they usually just pop the tip on and just leave it. But uh, we're going to show you how to get your tip into shape so that uh, it'll make screwing the ball a lot more easy because there's no way with a flat tip you can screw the ball. So we're going to need the help of a little bit of sandpaper. And Johnny just happens to have a piece <laughs> with him here. Now, it's, some players, some professionals use a file for this. I prefer a lump of rough sandpaper. I find it does the job much more quickly. It does tend to rough the t tip up a little bit, but then with a little bit of fine sandpaper when you finish, that'll help things. So basically all I do is get the sandpaper, work it onto the tip, which has got a flat surface here, as you can see. Work it onto the tip, keep turning the cue around, and it takes a while, uh, it takes a while to do this. This should be ready in about three days. So next yeah. week we have to put in the ball, will we? <laughs> so basically all it is, you just keep going until you get a nice little dome on the tip. But this is a one-piece cue we've got here. As you see, I use a two-piece cue. In fact, I was the first player in the UK to use a two-piece cue. I used it for a month and then had to go back to a one-piece because uh, I lost the instructions how to put it together. <laughs> so there we are. We've basically, it's only took a couple of minutes and we've got a nice dome on the cue there. So I'll let you have the sound okay. paper back again. And I think you've got a, a volunteer to help me out. As I say, we're going into the basics, so... Uh, we have indeed. And his name is John Robinson. <laughs> so, uh, John, we let you have the cue there that we've done a little bit of work on. If you'd come with me, good luck, John, round the table. I don't think he's going to need any luck, Johnny. So, as I say, we're going to start off with the basics. And the first and most important thing is the stance. If you haven't got the stance right, if you're off balance, well, then you're going to have slight problems. So we're just going to have a look at John just to see what sort of stance he has here. So if you would just address the ball, John, the way you normally would do. Now, if we could just hold it there, don't hit the ball. Now, if we can look at, uh, look at John here, his right leg is bent here, which he's not really, he doesn't look very balanced. So first of all, John, we'd like to get this right leg straightened up. If you straighten it right up, now that's good. Now, another bad fault that John has here. He's got his foot so he looks a little bit uh, a little bit flat footed really. So what you've got to do is you've got to point your right foot that's much better there. And as you can see if you can see here John has stood at about 45, 55 degree angle and that's just about right. Keep that leg perfectly straight and bend your right leg. Now that looks pretty good. That's a pretty solid stance now. So you can't go far wrong with that. So now after we've got the stance right, we're going to look at the bridge hand. And once again, if you look at John's bridge hand here, if you just take the cue away for a second, John. If you look at his bridge hand there, a little bit flimsy. So what you want to do is just lift your hand off the cloth, John. Now, straight down on the cloth and take a firm grip as if you were going to grab the cloth with your fingertips. That's it. Now bring that thumb over to the... That's absolutely perfect. He's made a perfect V here because you do get a lot of players and it's very flimsy and the cue will rock about. You, it's not very solid at all. So John has got the perfect bridge there with his forefinger and the thumb nicely knit together. Now just make the, a little bit... That's it, just a little bit closer to the ball. 
Right, now try and get the thumb up a little bit, a little bit further, and that's perfect. Now we just rest the uh, cue into the, the bridge hand there, and now the next thing would be getting your chin right down onto the cue. Now he's got his chin right on the cue, the stance is perfect, the bridge hand looks good. In fact, I think John's played quite a bit before. And once we get that all right, we're now looking at this backhand. And once again, as you can see, John is perfectly straight here, so that's all pretty good. How do you know how far away your bridge hand should be from the, the cue ball? In fact, that's a very good question, uh, Johnny, because we're always being asked that type of question as well. And looking at all the different players on the television, you get people like Bill Werbenick, who in fact has the cue some, mind you, he plays with rather a, a, a long cue, so his bridge hand is maybe 18 inches away from the, uh, from the object ball, the cue ball, and uh, it's very, very difficult, but uh, I would say about six to eight inches, so if you would just address the ball again there, John. Now that's just slightly closer, a little bit, that's about perfect there. So you're, you're talking about six to eight inches, and uh, that's Why? Just, well, well, the reason is, you see, if you get to, if I can just come in a second, John, if you get too far away from, from the uh, cue ball, you've got such a long distance to go through before you make contact with the white, so anything can happen. Yep. It can go offline. If you get too close to the, the cue ball, and a lot of people do this, when you're queuing up and you put, you can't come back, you're limited to how far you can get the cue back, so you can't get any power into the shot. Or slow. That's yeah. right. So once again, John, if you just address the ball and uh, cue up at it. Now, you've got the foot a little bit, uh, that's better, just point it, keep this leg straight, try and get it, so if you bring that back foot back a little bit, you're a little bit, that's it, bring it back this way. No, no, straight, you, you want to look at it. It's got to be, can we just do it again, if I just show you once again. When you're lining the shot up, if you stand back like this, and point the cue at it, and then walk into the shot, and your right leg should be more or less parallel to the white, the blue, and the pockets. So you keep that as straight as possible. So once you get that straight, then you bend your left leg and sort of lean slightly into the shot. You've just got a little bit more weight on your left leg. So try that again. Line it up. That's right. Now, not too far out with this. Turn this foot in slightly. Your right foot turn. Just turn. That's it. That's much better now. Now, that looks, he looks like a professional snooker player now. I get a nice cue action going. You see, John's got a very good cue action because he's hitting the ball more or less where he's aiming at it. Some people, they're very, very wobbly with the cue action. So that's pretty good. And you should have a pause. When you, when you cue up, let's have a little pause at the white back, pause, and then strike through the ball. Now you see, that was absolutely spot on there. Perfect stun as well. Right, now can we, uh, we can take it a step further now that we've got the basics right. We've got the stance, the bridge, the cue action. All the basics are right, so we're going to have a little practice uh, that, that John can try here, and indeed anyone can try, because it's, it's very, very difficult. So if we, uh, if we pop round here, what we do is we place the white ball in a direct line with all the spots, and the idea is to shoot the white down the spots and try and get the white to come back over the spots again. Have you played this before, John? Yeah. You have. So here we go. Don't forget, get that stance right again. Just bring the right foot. Just turn it in a little bit towards the table. That's much better. Now hit it fairly hard to see what happens. Now, that's pretty good again. Very good again. This is a complete test for the cue action because a lot of players, when they attempt this, they get down, strike the ball, now you can see what happened there. I got the white to go over the spots, but obviously I didn't hit the white dead center. I hit it left of center, so obviously it came back down the left side of the spots. If you hit it to the right just off center, it'll come back down the right side of the spots. So it's a very, very, uh, in fact, I'll have a go to see if I can get it down the spots. I might not be as good as John. Well, it wasn't too uh, bad, was it? Really? <laughs> John is just setting up an interesting little way. Rather than just striking the white up and down the, uh, up and down the spots, 
You can create like a little alleyway for yourself. And also you're focusing on hitting, on hitting the red ball in the center. So I've just put about six reds or possibly even eight reds. One brown. Well, seven reds and a brown will do nicely. So what you've got to do is uh, strike, just have another couple of goes at it, uh, John. You're just striking to hit this red here, so you're looking at the object ball as well. And hit it a little bit harder this time, see what happens. Now that's pretty good again, it's just slightly off, but that's, when you're doing it as close <laughs> to that, you're, you're pretty good really. Your turn, so, Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> my turn to have a go. I don't know the run straight. Now, if I can get in between there and back up again, I think the second last two are a little bit tight. The idea of this, John, is you can keep moving the reds in slightly and then you'll see how accurate you're getting at the shot. So I'll just have a go. Well, that was close, wasn't it? I only touched one. <laughs> they were close together as well. So that's a, that's a lovely little exercise to practice uh, when, when you're on your own. John, thanks ever so much. Can we give John a round of applause, please? I've got a lad here. I'd like you to see what his queuing action is like. Can you come out? What's your name? Patrick. 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 Hiya, Patrick. Yes. How are you? He's got a brother called Mickrick. No, Michael. <laughs> Michael, that's it. Do you play it again, Patrick, yeah? Right. right. Do you want to have a shot? Now, how, how old are you? Yeah. Eight. Patrick said that's exactly the age I was when I started playing, so we'll just have a look at Patrick's cue action because this could be very, very interesting indeed. Now, I don't want you to hit the ball, Patrick. If you just cue up to strike at the red, and let's see how you would cue up at the ball. And just hold it there. Now, we've got a, the stance is all wrong, but the most important thing about Patrick being eight years of age, if you look at it, just do it again, Patrick, just cue up again. If you look how his arm is, I mean, uh, it's impossible for him to get his arm absolutely dead straight like this because he's not tall enough. In fact, that's, uh, as I say, that was the age I was when I started. And what I used to do to combat this, I used to, uh, I used to carry a lemonade bottle around with me and stand on the, stand on the, not a bottle, I used to... <laughs> <laughs> with one toe! <laughs> I used to bring the, uh, the box, the crate that uh, carried the bottles, and I used to stand on it and that'd give me the height. But any youngster that's starting off at this age, well, he's going to have to start off with his, with his arm bent slightly like this so as he can reach the shot. But gradually as he gets a little bit taller, he's got to bring his elbow around so that it's absolutely perfectly straight. So that's a little tip for you. You'll be a little bit young to do it yet, but let's have a go and see if he can pop the red anyway. Well, that was hard luck, but a good, good oh, try. Oh, did it? Thanks very much indeed. Goodbye. Goodbye, Patrick. <laughs> I like you, he's not better than me, it is age. He's pretty good. Uh, well, we've had the youngsters uh, having a go. Let's, let's see how you shape up. I believe oh. you're a bit of a yes, super shark. I, I, I need to be prepared. I picked uh, some tips up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. They're better than mine, aren't they? <laughs> right. So we went through it with the youngsters going up and down the spots. So it's just really to see what sort of a stance you've got yourself, Johnny. So can we just have a look well, at... Sure. Yeah, now that's a pretty good stance. Now if you just uh, get the, this part of your hand, mm -hmm. you want to get that, that's a grip the, grip the cloth. Now let's see if you can get that wide up and down the spots. Well, you've definitely played before, that's only fractionally, I think that deserves a big round of applause. Good <laughs> Well, the table's perfectly level, John. It is, it is. I'll tell you what, Dennis, I think you should have a go at this because uh, it's harder than it looks, I think. <laughs> well, so I go on, have one more go. Up and down this spot. Let's see where this one goes. Well, that's a little bit... <laughs> <laughs> oh! That's beautiful! It's a banana shot. Thank you very much, Johnny. In fact, what Johnny's done there, he's put, a, put what we call a googly white on. It's slightly... It's slightly weighted on one side, and you can have an awful lot of fun with those. So in the old days, you play with ivory balls, and they actually used to run like that. Didn't that's they? right. In fact, you could only play so often with the old ivory balls, and then they had to be turned turned down again. Uh -huh. so, um, so they got smaller. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Let, let's go back to your uh, your action again there, because this is a very very important.
tip for the, the youngsters or anybody when they're playing the game. If you just get back into the striking right. position again. I'll get the other way. Can yeah, I? We, we'll get rid of the googly one. Okay. So really you're going to go up and down the spots. But once again, now what I'm going to do, Steve Davis, in fact, used to do this with his dad because it's very essential at the game of snooker. One of the most important things, and you'll hear the commentators telling them, is to keep your head perfectly still when you play the shot. And what he used to do, he used to practice and he would have his dad stood with the cue about a quarter of an inch above his head. So he would play the shot, even a forcing shot, and if he lifted his head, it would touch the cue. So let's just see what... Well, when you hit the ball, we've got to... You see, now he's miscued... Idea came up, didn't I? I miscued everything wrong. But yes, the, the, the number of people that do that, and their head, on every shot, even the professionals sometimes, when they're not going so well, when they strike the white, they automatically lift their head. So that's a nice little way when you're practicing. If you get your dad or your mum just to just stand there with the cue, not all day, just for a, for a few seconds, and it'll give you an idea how you're going. So that's a very, very good point. Use this. <laughs> well, I think Willie must have lifted his head all the time because he certainly took all the hair off his head. But well, I've got a junior Willie saw, <laughs> and as you can see, so it's going the same way. But a very useful, very, very useful and important tip, that one. What about the pendulum action? Is that all right? Well, the cue, the actual grip. Now, if we look at your grip here from... Uh, from the back, I don't know whether we can see, you see, you're, you've got a very loose grip. This is very, very important because uh, this is another part of the basics. The grip must be right. And you're a little bit flimsy there, so you could limp wrist it. That's yeah. right. There's a lot of margin of error. So if I could just basically get down and show you, really, what you do is you, you grab hold of the cue like you would grab hold of a golf club there, as if you were shaking hands with it. So the cue rests along the fingers, and you, you lap the fingers around the cue. Now, you don't want too tight a grip. Some people are playing and you can see the whites of their knuckles. Well, that's completely wrong because they can't get the cue to... When they follow through, it's not going to go on a perfectly straight line. So you don't want to be too tight. You don't want to be too loose. So it wants to be a fairly firm grip, but at the same time, your hand could slide up and down the cue. So basically, it's resting in those fingers. Then you, lap, you don't put your thumb on the top of the cue because that would impede it as well. So the, the thumb dangles down the side of the cue here. So it's a reasonably firm grip. And then, especially on a forcing shot, if you pull back to play a forcing shot, you've got to open, and then on the way through again, you grip the cue as you follow through. So that's very, very important, but you must, you must feel comfortable. So not too tight and not too slack. Just a nice, reasonably firm grip. Uh-huh. Shall I try that? Yeah, have a go, see where we go. Now that is much better this time, Johnny. You've got a nice firmish grip without it being too, too loose, too flimsy. So let's just see if you can roll it up over the spots. Hey, it's not bad, that. <laughs> Very good, Johnny. Well done. Now, the thing about this game, basically it's simple once you get it all right. But there's so many complications and so many questions. And some of the audience have asked questions. And there's Joe McCaffrey. Are you there, Joe? What's your question? How many one four seven breaks have we had? Oh, well, stinger. that's a tricky, well, it's not a tricky question, but uh, in fact, I've only ever made uh, one maximum break, uh, Joe, and that was in practice. I've never made one in a match, but when I practice, I never really practice to make a 147 break. I just practice as if I was playing frames of snooker. I never smashed the balls up to make a 147, so I've only ever made one in practice. Uh -huh. But it's a very interesting question. Willie Thorne has made 40 or 50 uh, 147 breaks wow. in practice, yeah. Wow. When was your first century break? How old were you? Well, it's funny enough, I left, uh, I left Coal Island in, in Northern Ireland here when I was 17. 30 miles from here. 30 miles from here, 17, uh, when I was 17 and a half. So that's quite a few years ago. But up until that, I'd made uh, 20 century breaks at billiards, but my highest break at snooker was uh, 54. But when I went, moved over to England, within three months, I'd been playing with a lot uh, better players, and uh, I made my first century breaks within three months of moving to England. Amazing. So. Got the bit between your teeth. Joanne Black, you've got a question. Where's Joanne? Would you like any of your older fa family to start and play snooker? Well, that's another interesting question. I've got uh, three, three of the family. One girl, Denise, who's 15, and uh, one boy, 13, Damien, and the other one's uh, nine, Brendan. And Brendan and Damien both play snooker. But it's a game, I would love them, uh, Damien's very, very good, uh, could be an excellent player, I'd love them to play, but it's a sort of a game, I wouldn't force my family to play the game. He's a very good footballer and golfer, and uh, you've got to leave them, if, 
there's no good, you can never force anyone to be good at this game. If they haven't got the interest and they're not dedicated and keen enough, you've got to leave it up to them. Cause, right, well, here's another question. When you've got your time to yourself and you're not uh, too busy, how long do you spend in practice? Well, that depends. Uh, really, the practice is all done as an amateur, Johnny. When you're an amateur, I used to spend hour after hour after hour practicing. But now as a professional, you're so heavily committed and you find you know how much practice you need to keep you at the top of your game. Before a big championship, if I play an hour, maybe two hours a day, that's enough to keep me, uh, to keep me in form. Really? Amazing. There's another question here from Sonia Moore. Sonia? When are you thinking of giving up, Snicker? <laughs> when are you thinking of giving up? <laughs> when are you thinking of giving up? Well, I was thinking of giving up after a loss in the World Championships last year. <clears throat> no, I, uh, I've been a professional now uh, for 13 years. And I've enjoyed every minute of it, and I'm, I'm 37 years of age. And I, I, John Spencer and Ray Reardon, to me, were at their peak when they were in their 40s, their early 40s. Yeah. So I'm still really learning the game. And snooker's a game you can go on to play to your... Fred Davis is still playing at 70, 72 years of age. And that's the beauty about it. When we're doing these uh, coaching lessons, anybody can play the game. They don't have to be. They can be 8-year-old or they can be 98-year-old. So you can carry on playing as long as you want. What about, what about you actually popping some balls? Let's see how good your action is and how consistent it is. Well, I suppose uh, everybody likes to see the old uh, trick shots now and again, so we're going to finish off with uh, a trick shot. We've been talking about cue action and getting all the basics right, so we'll go into a, a trick shot here, which is probably the most difficult trick shot of them all, and I'm sure that you've all seen this before. You've heard of the machine gun shot, have you? Yeah. Yes. Some well, someone, I've got enough here, yes, yeah, someone hasn't seen the machine gun shot. All in a fairly straight line, sort of a diagonal with the middle pocket. And we've got the, uh, the cue ball, and the idea is to shoot the white into the corner pocket. Before the white gets there, we've got to get all the seven reds in. Thanks, Johnny. As I say, this one takes years and years of practice. In fact, there's quite, quite a few of the professionals that don't even bother playing this one, so it's an awful lot of practice goes into this and I might even need a couple of tries to get it right but let's see if we can no, get it no. <laughs> see if we can get it first time for you let's have a look now that was absolutely perfect but I forgot to hit the reds that time <laughs> <laughs> so that's got the speed of the table let's have a go this time We haven't covered a lot of ground this time, but we've had to get going and talk about the basics. In future programs, we're going to be talking about every aspect. Spin, control of the ball, brake building, and you might do a 147 for it. Well, we'll have a bit of fun and hopefully it'll help everybody along the way. Well, that's all this time. See you next time. Bye.